WUUB Jupiter, a good karma brand's radio station. Ooh, wee! Look at what that pressure make a golfer do. Sorry, Rory. Live from the Anajar and Levine Accident Attorney Studios. The man, your man, could smell it. Theo Dorsey is theoretically speaking. But are you a different animal and the same beast? What does that mean, Kobe Bryant? Streaming live on YouTube, here's Theo Dorsey. You know, there's there's several different ways you can work your weekend, right? Uh, sometimes you have yourself a nice lazy weekend where you just kick back on the couch, you watch a little sports, maybe a couple of movies, you eat some snacks, you get a little uh, fat and happy. Lazy weekends are fun. I had myself a, an intentional and productive weekend. I had a lot of fun, checked out some new spots around the area. I also I also did a lot of revamping to my living room and also Cat. most importantly, I got back on that Traeger grill. Wow. Hopped right back on the horse. I know last time we talked about me on the Traeger, it was disappointing. I, I thought I could just slide by and make the burger sliders with ease. Not a lot of prep. This time I went in and I overprepared and I did rips for the first time. Wow. That was a look ahead spot. The sliders were a look ahead spot. Yes. You know, you had the Titans coming to town. You thought you could kind of sleepwalk through the practice week and mop through them. No, it didn't happen. I was up. I was up late like the Dolphins were on the Titans. Up by 13, two minutes to go, and boy, did they come back and get my ass. <laughs> and that was the reason why I, I was feeling a little down that day after the sliders. But I put ribs on the grill this weekend, Whoa. just yesterday. Some baby back ribs, and boy, were them things not tender. Oh. <laughs> mm. I tried to do the fall off the bone, but but no, I, I had to cut them things off the bone. So I'm still learning, still working, by the way. Uh, if you have any Traeger tips, especially when it comes to the ribs, and on how to make them fall off the bone, uh, my line is open right here. 888-760-3776. 888-760-3776. It was a little embarrassing, but the sides were hitting. The mac and cheese and the baked beans never fell. So we did recover on that. Um, someone who wishes they could have recovered on their weekend and undoubtedly is is likely just not not having a good one, bouncing back off of what happened Sunday is Rory McIlroy uh, following that U.S. Open meltdown. A total and utter embarrassing meltdown. McIlroy, who led by two strokes with five holes to go at the U.S. Open. It had been 10 years, 2014, since Rory McIlroy uh, was a major champion in golf. A guy that had that start of his career that was so promising. We were having thoughts of Tiger Woods, similar to the Scotty Scheffler situation. Thoughts of Tiger Woods' run early with Rory McIlroy and that right there, the dismantling of his game, the missing of two putts from within four feet in the, in a matter of two holes late in the U S open, opened the door up for Bryson DeChambeau who ended up taking it all right there. The one twenty fourth U S open Bryson DeChambeau gets the victory, but what's on a lot of people's mind is what did happen on that back nine uh, at Pinehurst number two. What was the result, what really happened down there. And I hate C-Cat when we get into this discussion when it comes to other sports of did this guy win it or did this guy lose it? So that's exactly what we're doing here on Theoretically Speaking today. Did Bryson DeChambeau win the U.S. Open or did Rory McIlroy fumble it away? And we put up a poll, actually, a Palm Beach County Supervisor of Elections poll of the week on ESPN West Palm on Twitter, at ESPN West Palm, you can vote right now. Was this a Rory win or a Rory loss or a DeChambeau win or was it a mix of both? But right here on the airwaves, we're not playing the fence. We're going to go one mm-hmm. side or the other. And to me, in other sports, when you do it in the NBA, it's tougher to call. When you do it in the NFL, it's a way harder struggle and a, a tougher battle to, d- to decipher through. But what I saw out there from Rory McIlroy on that back nine with the lead – with a chance to break a curse, at least what it feels like to be a curse, a guy that continues to finish top 10 but not hoist a major championship, Rory McIlroy utterly melt down in that situation, and that was a loss more so than it was a Bryson DeChambeau win, however it's spectacular that, uh, that chip was out of the bunker for Bryson DeChambeau. I legitimately cannot believe what happened right there to Rory McIlroy, especially given that he was my pick, on Friday, when we took it to the house, Seacat, I went with Roy McElroy. You went with Bryson DeChambeau, your guy from uh from Live Golf, and I thought I had it in the bag. I was literally grilling my ribs, and as I was growing my confidence 
in how the ribs were turning out because they did look beautifully coming off that grill. They did look luscious. They tasted delicious as well. We got the flavoring right. As I'm watching the U.S. Open and getting my ribs right, I see that meltdown, and I had a similar look on my face when I noticed how, uh, how just thick and tough the ribs were. That was absolutely disastrous. It was absolutely a Roy McIlroy loss and not a Bryson DeChambeau win. We're actually going to open up the, uh, the Baptist Health hotline early today, 888-760-3776, 888-760-3776. Was the 124th U.S. Open where Bryson DeChambeau wins it with a putt that he called one of the greatest moments of his life. Was that a DeChambeau win or a Rory McIlroy uh, loss? 888-760-3776. That's the Baptist Health Hotline. Are you experiencing foot and ankle pain and need to see an expert in the field? Baptist Health Orthopedic Care has a team of foot and ankle orthopedic surgeons and specialists who are regarded as leaders in their specialty. Visit baptisthealth.net slash ortho to learn more today. Baptist Health Orthopedic Care combines its resources of experienced physicians and leading edge treatments and technology to provide advanced orthopedic, foot and ankle, joint replacement, spine and sports medicine care. Visit baptisthealth.net slash ortho for more information today. Baptist Health Orthopedic Care has offices conveniently located in Palm Beach County through the Florida Keys. Learn more by visiting baptisthealth.net slash ortho. 888-760-3776. Was it Rory fumbling away a chance at breaking his major drought, or was it Bryson DeChambeau um, and his heroics down the stretch that actually clinched the victory? And again, I tell you, I've never seen something look so bad. I mean, I could have made those putts. And Cat, you've seen how terrible I am, especially mm-hmm. in my short game on the greens. Yeah, like within four feet? What was the number for Rory? Like a 496? Yeah. For 496 all season long? It's it's not even a layup. Calling it a layup is almost too soft because you can miss a layup in an NBA game. That putt unhindered, that's got to go in. That was ridiculous uh, on 16. And then to follow that up with missing a, a tougher putt on 18, but a putt he should have made nonetheless, it was disgusting. He made four birdies in five holes. On 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. And then he just absolutely Oof. bleeped the bed. Three bogeys in his last four holes. Two-shot lead, looking like you are who everyone says you are. And then all of a sudden, he proved the haters right. Yeah. Ugh. Yeah. And that's the thing, too, is, is again, with Rory McIlroy, nobody's doubting that he's a talent. Nobody's da- doubting that he's one of the greatest golfers in the world, but there's a lot of people who doubt he will uh, win a major again, especially with performances like this one and the ones he's had for the past 10 years, finishing uh, top five actually 10 different times, I believe it was, Rory McIlroy, and now still coming up majorless, his last one, Valhalla, 2014. That's a long time ago. 888-760-3776, 888-760-3776. Was this a Roy McElroy loss or a Bryson DeChambeau win at the U.S. Open? Jalen in North Carolina jumping on, theoretically speaking, uh, coming off of a Father's Day weekend, coming off of a Roy meltdown, Jalen. How is this anything other than Roy McElroy just totally letting it drip down his legs? Well, I think, Theo, man, first of all, appreciate you having me on. I was actually boots on the ground early in the week at Pinehurst, so I just wanted to let you okay. know I had a little inside, a little inside there to the practice rounds. And I, I mean, from Tuesday, Wednesday's practice rounds, you looked Rory. He looked very confident. He looked very strong out there on the range. You know, as you watch everything that unfolded this weekend, I, I I'd have to go and say this is a Bryson D. Shambo victory only because this is something we've become accustomed to when it comes to Roy McIlroy, right? Ooh. I mean, 2015, he had his first ever chance to win a Grand Slam, right? The career Grand Slam, and he choked that away. I mean, it's something we've seen multiple times. Mm. I mean, he did an Open Championship before. Was it? I think that was in 2010. Not 100% on that, but, I mean, this is something we see even at non-major events. Roy McIlroy, he's right there. A lot of times he's the bridesmaid, never the bride man. It's unfortunate because he's a good golfer. I mean, the skills are there, one of one, but it just looks like, I mean, I don't know if he has the ability just to close the deal. I mean, it's been a decade now, like we said. That's it, a, it, it, it has the game the next question. 
That's a that's a great call right there because and appreciate the call, Jalen. That's actually a, a even more demoralizing way to look at it. I, I hadn't heard it put that way, but like, is it just a Deshambo win because now we're accustomed to McElroy folding in the big moment? Like, is he now like the Jason Tatum of golf? I mean, he's already won a couple like four majors, right? Already. Yeah, he, he has a history of winning, but that's becoming ancient history. Oh. What have you done for me lately? It does not matter if you won a tournament last weekend. you got to do the same dang thing this weekend. It's easier said than done. Where you're saying whoever happens to be the running mate with McElroy, whoever's one, two, or three, you can kind of default, put that second or third guy, give him the gold medal, give him the trophy because Roby's going to fall out no matter what. Well, then, it's, then that would further prove my point then that it wasn't a DeChambeau win it was the he was the guy that was going to be second but Rory fumbled it away like and you can tell also by the way that Rory got his ass up out of there right afterwards <laughs> that he knew he fumbled it away like no better tell that you know it was all on you when you escape before talking to the media I think back to Cam Newton with the Carolina Panthers in that in that Super Bowl where he didn't fall on the fumble he catches all that flack he exits that press conference. You don't want to face the fire. You don't want to talk to the media or to the public following one of the biggest disappointments of your life. Like, I don't blame Rory McIlroy for getting out of there in time because that was literally a mental meltdown. Like, if in the biggest moment, one of the brightest spots of your career, something that's as routine that you literally have done nearly 500 times and have aced it every single time, you fail on that, and then similarly miss another putt on 18 just two holes later in a similar spot, like, that's all on you. You make those two putts, you win the U.S. Open. You make at least one of them, you you potentially go to a playoff against Bryson DeChambeau, but especially when you heard DeChambeau afterwards talk about how he heard the moans of the crowd when Roy McIlroy missed that putt on 18, and he knew he had a window of opportunity. That doesn't sound like to me a guy that went out and won it, that sounds like a guy who was right there for the taking, almost like a, a dog. You know, when a dog gets some scraps off the ground, like is he really eating or is he just getting the scraps of your meal? Like DeChambeau was there to eat it off the ground because Rory fumbled it. It didn't feel like it was great. Now, again, the one thing that guards me from that, like that bunker shot. Yeah. Whew. That's Ridic crazy. Ridiculous up and down. I think there was like a 2% chance this ball was going to be in the hole after two shots when that ball was put in the bunker. It was a ridiculous to bunker shot, but Bryson had his B game almost all weekend, yeah. Saturday into Sunday. The dude couldn't hit a fairway. I think he was like four for 18 and hitting fairways in a course that should be punishing you for that. It didn't matter. His scrambling and his two-putting was just off the charts good, but... Bryson didn't have his A game, and that's damning when you're going against who should be the world number three in Rory McIlroy. Well, the guy that's right here in our backyard, Jack Nicklaus, the Bear, he he said it famously, like the game of golf, 90% mental, and it felt like a very mental meltdown for Rory McIlroy in this one. It didn't feel like a Bryson DeChambeau win. As much as the heroics, as much as, as it looked good down the stretch, or at least that shot did itself and him sinking that putt and having the great moment, it did feel more like it was Rory opening the door for him, and he just walked clean through it. Again, you can jump on Twitter at ESPN West Palm and vote on our Palm Beach County Supervisor of Elections poll of the day. Was that a Bryson DeChambeau win in the U.S. Open, or was that just a Rory loss? We'll give the results of that later on here on Theoretically Speaking. We're still taking your calls on was this a win or a loss? 888-760-3776, 888-760-3776. And in many other sports, CCAT, it does feel foolhardy to have this conversation because you're able to be out there on the field, right? In football, I know for Josh Allen in the 13 seconds game, we look at that one and say he played his tail off. He had an immaculate run. He did what he was supposed to do, but the Chiefs went out there and won it. Like, that's not a Josh Allen loss, but it is a Bills loss. That Bills defense was out there. For Rory McIlroy, and at least with the game of golf, it's more so you versus you, you versus the course. And when you have a lead like that going into the final five holes of a, of a major like that for Rory McIlroy, you losing that one, yeah. I, I got to put that one on the guy that fumbled it away, not just the guy that took advantage of it. 888-760-3776, 888-760-3776. We've got Segway Sean. Segway Sean in West Palm Beach. He's on Theoretically Speaking. And and first, before you give me help with the ribs, Sean, before you give me help with the ribs that did come out a little a little too tough, uh, was this a Rory loss yesterday or a DeChambeau win? 
No, it's just a standard Rory. I'd love to. I'd love to be standard Rory. You know. <laughs> yeah. He walked away with two point three million, day, man. You know, he flew away. Yeah, exactly. He's he's talking about talk eating me ribs. You know, he's doing whatever he wants to do today. <laughs> but uh, but anyway, yeah, he's uh, he, he always comes up a little short when I think that uh, he's not all together. That's. Sounds like something he typically would do. It's not surprising, I guess you could say. Not surprising, and that, that I feel like is the most disheartening part about it, uh, looking from afar. Yeah. But you said you had some help for me on the Traeger grill with the uh, with the ribs, trying to make them fall off the bone. I tried to go with the 3-2-1, but uh, it ended in, in sad defeat, almost worse uh, for me than Roy McElroy. What, what what do you have for me on that Traeger? What, what's a quick tip you can give me, man? I, you know, I've, I've been off the I've been off the radio for the last uh, 50 minutes or so, so I didn't I don't know if somebody else already called in and gave you any basic tips. But what I can tell you is, um, you know, obviously smoking for you know a few or a few hours or whatever six hours they do on a smoker. But I'm not sure how long it takes on a smoker. But I know that's that's obviously the ideal way to do it, low and slow, to have them fall off the bone. But if you're going to do it on the grill, the only way that I've found that you could possibly do it is either do grill and then oven, or oven and then grill. You know, I, I always do like Here about an hour and a half at a low temp, like I don't know, like a like a two fifty for like an hour and a half, and then and then kiss them on the grill and then sauce them. And that's always in the. Sometimes those people say that if you put them in the oven first, then they'll fall apart by the time you put them on the grill. So you could do it the other way around. You know, kiss them on the grill for the marks and the outside searing, and then put them in the oven for a little bit of dry yeah. heat. But a little blade. Anyway, you can't just put them on the grill like a hamburger. You can't just put them on the grill. It's going to take longer than that for the to, for the, the the muscles to break down, tendons and stuff to break, to break down. It's going to take a lot longer than that. So that's real. That's real. And I appreciate the call, segue, Sean. I mean, it's it's a little blend of both. Just like some people are going to try and say, uh, you know, it's going to be a, a little bit the shambo win, a little bit Rory loss. Give it a little blend of the oven and the in the grill. I've been hearing some hints of that. I might try that thing out. But at least I was not defeated by this at least I got back on the horse and got on the Traeger and tried my hand at it and Rory McIlroy he has no choice right like he's going to be at that British Open he's going to try and end that major drought but especially coming off of this one Cat, I just don't see how those thoughts don't creep out of his mind like oh. if you look at all the statistics if he's if he's going down on the back nine with the lead again at a major I mean must see TV but also like that is maybe the most crippling pressure I can think of for any athlete right now in today's uh, la- landscape. Well, he's back on the wagon for the British Open, but he's going to be back on the wagon for next weekend. Yeah. PGA Tour has scheduled a premium event next weekend, the Travelers Championship, because these guys want longer time off in between. So that means you stack the majors with the premium events. He's going to show up on Thursday, if not earlier, for the Travelers, and he's going to have to perform because if he collapses and doesn't make the cut there or, dare I say, even worse, Falls up short and chokes away a lead ooh. next weekend. Ooh, people are gonna be talking, and it ain't gonna be great about Rory. It will not be. If it's not great for you out there on the road, well, might I suggest a solution? If you get into a car accident, a truck accident, a slip and fall, Anna Jar and Levine accident attorneys, Mark Anna Jar and Glenn Levine, they will fight for you. They don't get paid unless you do. That's how it works. Rory still got paid, by the way, two point three million. For missing those putts, I'll take that back. They get you the maximum compensation you deserve. Call Anna Jar and Levine for your free consultation. Don't just settle for any attorney. Demand Anna Jar and Levine. That's the Anna Jar and Levine difference. It takes one phone call to take back control of your life. So take back control of your life. Call 1-800-747-FREE. That's 1-800-747-3733. Now, it's a packed show today. We have Evan Cohen coming up. On the other side, we're going to talk some NBA Finals with him. We'll even talk some Rory and DeChambeau. And also, it's a Duffy's MVP Monday, the greatest sound in sports. We leave you with our first Duffy's MVP candidate of the weekend, the person that shined the brightest in CCAT. It comes from the U.S. Open. Of course. I mean, this was four days of golf, and it was great every single day. It climaxed on Sunday with the best back nine I can remember watching since the 2019 Masters when mm. it comes to majors. But I'm a Bryson DeChambeau fan. I'm a Crushers fan. I was rooting for Bryson all the way over the weekend, but he's you're wearing not your hat. My, I'm wearing the hat today. If you're watching on YouTube, at Theo speaking, my Crushers GC hat. But Bryson's not the Duffy's MVP that came from the U.S. Open this weekend. It's Francisco Molinari. Dude, on Friday, he needed a hole-in-one on 18 to make the cut. If he doesn't get a hole-in-one on this par three, 
He goes home, having to pay his caddy, having to pay his airfare, having to pay his stay, not making a dime from the PGA Tour, not making a dime from the U.S. Open. So he needs to hold this one to make the weekend. And that's what he did. Unless he pulls a up, Straka. Good. Oh, we've had a good bounce. Look at this. Look at this. Oh, oh, Come on. Oh, Ain't no way. <laughs> Come on. Oh, this is the first time that has literally ever happened. That no golfer has ever needed a hole in one to make the weekend, to make the cut, and actually achieved it. That's why he is historically my Duffy's MVP of the weekend, no doubt about it. That's going to be hard to top. That's going to be hard to top. We'll give out a couple more candidates throughout the show and give you the winner, the Duffy's MVP of the weekend at the end. I think that one, I mean, talk about unbreakable sports records. Kyle Ripken, uh, yeah, I, I think you got a, a new leader in the clubhouse, if you will. Uh, we're bringing in Evan Cohen from Unsportsmanlike. We'll, uh, we'll ask him about that one, too, as well as the NBA Finals. Do they end tonight? Or do we get one more game? Evan Cohen from Unsportsmanlike gives us insight on Theoretically Speaking after the break. Live from the Anajar and Levine Accident Attorney Studios, Anajar and Levine.